Welcome to this Skejo Guild video all about using Decoder Pro to set up a DCC chip in a locomotive. The first thing you need is a rolling road. This is a short piece of track with a couple of driving wheel support blocks and a pony truck support block for our 042 locomotive. These both these sit on a short piece of track. And here we have our locomotive sitting on top of the rolling road, ready to go. The second component to allow communication between your computer and the DCC chip inside the loco is this collection. This is a sprog. It's an electronic unit which converts um, signals from the PC into the standard DCC signals. And here we are connected up. The two green leads from the sprog are connected to the two uh, rails on the track. It doesn't matter which way round they go as DCC is um, an alternating current. And then the sprog connects to a USB port in your computer. And the black lead goes up to the power socket. The next thing to do is to run Decoder Pro on your PC. You will see when you do that, that it lists my collection of locos. This is the roster of existing locomotives that I have. And you'll notice on the left hand side, new loco. This is a new loco that I've recently purchased and that's the one I want to, uh, to run. The first task then is to find out what kind of decoder you have in your locomotive. To do that you press on New Loco and that brings up a screen which lists all the manufacturers known to Decoder Pro. Pressing this button here, Read Type from Decoder, will actually read the information from the decoder in the loco. And once it's done so, it will highlight the particular devices, decoders, that it believes you've got in your locomotive. So these are, as you scroll up, you will find they are a Zimo Unified software and it's picking those two particular types uh, the MX644C and the MX644D it doesn't really matter which one of those you choose so select one and then it will display the address all locomotives, all decoders initially come with a single uh, two byte address and always three. That can be changed to reflect the loco number which is in my case 4871. Now 4871 is a four digit code so that needs to be changed to a long number type and then you can write that information to the loco. The locomotive has now been programmed with its own number. Once you've defined the number in the loco, you can add that into the roster. You can give the roster and the engine an ID. And I'll just put the number for the moment. And now I can save that to my collection of locomotives. Once you've got your roster entry, you can double click on the entry and it'll bring up a screen which shows all the options available for this particular decoder. In this case, this is a Zimo decoder. And you can see a huge number of tabs across the top here, each of which covers a particular area of the decoder's information. For example, on BASIC we have the address. You'll note that everything is highlighted in yellow at the moment. That is because all the settings in here uh, are default settings and they have not been read from the decoder itself. So everything in all of the tabs will be a yellow colour. So one of the first things to do in order that your entry on your computer matches all the information currently in the decoder is simply to read the entire um, uh, the entire decoder and you can do that by pressing one of the buttons at the bottom here where it says read all sheets 
and if you do that as you go through each of these you'll find all the yellow is now changing to white as it reads each of the CVs from the chip itself. This process will carry on for some while so at this point we'll wait until the entire set of sheets has been read in. The thing to note that while this reading of all the CVs is being done the locomotive is actually moving very very slightly. It's almost impossible to see but you may just see the locomotive driving wheel just vibrating a tiny bit as it reads each of those CV numbers that's quite useful because that allows you to know that the decoder is responding to the commands from the computer. Now that we have read all the details from the decoder we can now save that to all the settings we can save that to our hard disk. The next thing we want to do is just have a look at the engine itself and run it and see how it accelerates and decelerates. To do that we go to the actions menu and bring up a new throttle. Here we can see all the function keys available to us and also a speed control. The first thing we need to do is call up the number of our engine 4871 and set that. We then need to turn the power on so that the engine is now powered. We can then change the speed by sliding the little bar up and watch the engine move. Once the engine's moving we can put on sound with the Zimo chip. F1 will bring in the, the sound and if we slow that down and then speed up we can then hear it chuff slow it down speed it up OK, let's watch our engine. We'll change the speed to 50% and you can see it's accelerating very slowly. And we can bring sound on. decelerate back to zero. Now actually the deceleration isn't too bad on this one. The acceleration I think for me is too slow. Bring that up to 50% again. Another thing you can watch for is the chuff rate and we can see it's making the same sound pretty much every time the con rods are at the bottom of the stroke. So actually the chuff rate is pretty good on this one. Decelerate back down to zero. Well that's quite a reasonable deceleration rate. You kind of want the engine, well for me anyway, I like the engine to run about 18 inches to 2 feet if I slow it down rapidly then you can judge bringing it into a station quite well. So what we're going to do is change the acceleration rate and the deceleration rate. This is the motor tab on the Zimo uh, pages 
and you can see the acceleration at the rate at the moment is set to a number 50. If we change that to a smaller number that should accelerate uh, more rapidly. It's basically the bigger the number the slower the acceleration. So we're going to change that to 20 and we are going to write the changes on the sheet which is just that one single number and then using the throttle again we're going to change the speed. That has accelerated quicker than it did before. I haven't changed the deceleration rate so that is going to stay the same. So here we are accelerating from 0 to 50 percent. You can see that picks up quicker than it did before. That's quite nice. As I said before, the deceleration looks, rate looks pretty good to me, so I'm not going to change that. Just so that, just for demonstration purposes, let's have a look to see what happens if I change the acceleration rate to zero. I can write that change to the sheet. Well, here we are back with the locomotive and I'm going to step the speed from 0 to 50% and off it goes. So you can see the effects of acceleration. Zero acceleration basically means that it will instantly change speed. So you need to have that number set to something reasonable. Back to our screen. I'm going to change that back up to 20 write the changes on the sheet and that is now done. We're going to, get to now look quickly at speed control. Generally speaking in a decoder there's a couple of ways of doing that. The first one is to uh, go in a linear fashion between a start point and a final point and that's what's set in this particular tab. It's called basic speed control the next tab along is called speed table and this is where you can set a effectively a graph of how the speed behaves so instead of being linear in this particular case it responds much more slowly in the first part of the uh, of, of the percentage throttle uh, than it does at the end and this this can suit uh, some slow moving locos uh, such as dock shunters and if we want to use that we can simply click use speed table on the choice at the top here and then that speed table will be used and once again I need to write the changes on that sheet to the decoder and then I can uh, run my engine if I put it up to 50% and this of course has got acceleration I can see now that that is running slower than it did before just turn on sound So you can end up with a lot more sensitivity at the low end of the range. And if you go up to 100% it will go at full speed and the latter part of the control that you have with a hand controller uh, will be far less sensitive. So here we have the engine, run it up to 50%, acceleration is quite nice, but as you can see that's now running quite a lot slower than it was before with the linear control. Take it up higher to 75% and in many ways with a small engine like this, this kind of control is actually quite suitable. Take it up to 100% and we're away. Drop it back down at 50%. The only problem with a speed table is that the deceleration rate will not apparently do much to begin with because it's bringing it down but it's running pretty quickly anyway. 
are the sounds that you can the controller on the PC is a is a complete one you can blow the whistles you can create other sounds as well and just check that they're all working properly all going well The other important area of the decoder uh, screens is the sound levels. You may want to fiddle with these. And here we have a massive number of options available to us. There's an overall volume here, which is currently set to a value of 64. But as you can see by scrolling down here, there are an enormous number of sounds that you can override for individual function keys and their responses. So for the moment I'm just going to show you what happens if we change the overall volume. Once again if we can run our loco you can hear the loco in the background change the volume to a much louder one Run our engine again. You can hear a difference. The thing with Decoder Pro is when you do change a value, it will stop the power going to the chip and you using the throttle you then have to go back again. So once again I can change that volume back to 64 say. Right, changes on sheet. Bring in the throttle, turn the power on. Turn the sound on. It's gone back to our quieter mode. It may be desirable in a exhibition for example to have much louder sounds. The very personal preference as to what is reasonable or not. For me that's a little bit on the quiet side so I'm going to change that. I'm going to bring that up to say 100. Right changes, there we are. Bring the throttle back. Has it gone? There it is. better. Good. Another setting changed. Going back to our loco then, let's run that with its new enhanced sound in a reverse direction. Nice. So that's 50% throttle, it's going quite nice and slowly, which an engine of this type would have done if I change direction, that'll decelerate, brake squeal comes on, you can hear the click of the reversal, and off we go in a forward direction. If you do want to change the chuff frequency, if you find that it's not quite right, this is the page that you do it on. On the Zimo chip it's labelled, it's the sound tab. And here you can see virtual ch cam chuff frequency is set to 90. Steam chuff frequency at speed step 1 is set to 3. It's those two numbers that you need to play with. Uh, they recommend that you first of all zero both of those and then set speed step 1 
uh, and f you measure uh, a number at that point it's well worth googling how to do it properly because it is quite complicated and I certainly wouldn't recommend you play with those numbers unless you really know what you're doing.